Forbidden Door 2024 is starting to take shape. We've got two women's matches, MJF in action, and Swerve Strickland defending his AEW World Championship. Hey guys, I think the learning tree is getting over. What do you think? I think that Chris Jericho might be one good apple. Take it away, Chandler. Hey, Daver here. How you doing, Chad? Not so bad, not so bad. This guy's chat. Ah, I did it again. Two in a row, I rhymed. Oh, you're a poet and didn't know it. Boo. Ooh, I, I rhymed too. Shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Chandler is on assignment. He actually flew to Japan to try to convince Takeshita to make him his manager. Good luck with that. I don't know. Callus, Callus is pretty hard to hard to beat. That dude's, yeah, he's human garbage. Yeah, uh, his uh, brown note theme song. I love it. Um, I got to say, Callus uh, has so much heat, man. He gets booed out of the building no matter what he does. Great. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually, I actually, he doesn't have go away heat with me. I actually genuinely enjoy hating him. Yeah, yeah, me too. Me too, for sure. Um, yeah, we're going to review the AW Dynamite uh, from June 5th from Loveland, Colorado. Uh, not a bad episode. Uh, I think uh, they overstayed their welcome just a bit on the uh, learning tree stuff. What do you think? Yeah, I was actually really getting into it. I think if they had cut the, uh, the canteen food bit with the chicken and dumplings, would have been just the right amount uh uh we were kind of talking off camera uh i thought big bill and uh brian were both excellent they are kind of like it was kind of fun to see their like silly goofiness shine uh especially i don't know i was getting kick out of um uh, out of the bounty hunter uh to uh can't be disrespecting uh jericho teach that kid to respect jericho i was like these, these guys are killing me you better teach your baby to respect Chris Jericho. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, and the, and the bit where uh, they're with Daddy Magic, yeah, and Angelo, and Daddy Magic's like, shove it up your ass. And uh, <laughs> Big Bill's like, you got me. <laughs> it was great. Like, oh, yeah, they're, they're the highlight. I'm not going to lie. Um, but, yeah, uh, we got MJF doing a pretty great promo, setting up a Forbidden Door match for him. Uh, and then kind of the win, win, win on that. We got Roosh getting a little push, Ooh, yeah. uh, which is long overdue. What do you think? Oh, that was awesome, man. The way to, way to just MJF is the master of this, like builds his opponent up, like makes them feel like a big deal just because like, you know, it's a match with MJF. Of course it's going to be a big deal. And, uh, that, that brawl at the end, like, I felt it, man. I'm like, I'm ready for it. Like, I want this match right now. Yeah, it uh, added so much emotion to it and stakes and made you want it even more. Yeah. So that, yeah, that added another layer to it as opposed to just having their little promo and that be it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. they nailed he's, it. He's so good at that. Like just building them up, yet taking digs at them at the exact same time. Like I, I, I don't think I've ever seen anyone quite as good at, as he is at it. Dude, it is an art. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, how do you like an MJF's new look? I am digging it. Yeah. No more yeah. suit. He looks like a like a biker almost, you know? Yeah, he's he looks badass. And then like when that jacket comes off, it's like, oh man, I forgot how ripped he got. Like uh ah. yeah, he's he's for me probably the total package right now. Uh not Lex Luger, you know, the actual total package. Uh <laughs> uh yeah i'm into it man like uh i hate it hate to say it because uh getting injured sucks but i think it was almost the best thing for him because he came back like he kind of got to hit the reset button a little like no more goofy shtick it's like oh no he's still treading that baby face territory but he's badass at the same time yeah yeah not quite stone cold baby face badass but it's different it yeah. hits different in a good way yeah no he's kind of he's out there just doing his own thing i love it 
I mean, his character is him. Yeah. Like, that's who he is. <laughs> From what I understand. Yeah, good stuff. Um, yeah, we uh, were treated with uh, MJF promo right off the bat. Uh, they didn't even do the uh, Dynamite intro. <laughs> yeah, I think that's two weeks in a row now. They, they yeah, did yeah. the cold open with Mercedes last last week or was that two weeks ago i don't know time's all weird Can't remember. yeah yeah i don't particularly like the dynamite intro no to be honest with you i like the old one better yeah same <laughs> it's uh yeah it's funny the uh the repackaging like i love the colors i love the uh the artwork but yeah that per that intro just doesn't do it for me either i don't know if it's the music or how they put it together but uh yeah definitely not for me yeah, I'm not into it either. Uh, we got MJF starting out with, uh, he says, uh, don't mind me if my eyes are bloodshot and squinty. We're in Colorado, baby. Then we get a, a weed chant. <laughs> uh, he uh, puts over his new merch, and then he puts over his, uh, or the fact that he'll have a forbidden door match. He says he's either, either going to wrestle someone from Mexico or Japan. A uh, little foreshadowing there. Uh, I liked he uh, calls out Okada, uh, makes fun of his physique, uh, says he's got all this money but can't afford a gym membership. Ooh. <laughs> uh, calls out Swerve Strickland. He says he's not a business mogul. Uh, he uh, probably didn't even go to business school, but if he did, he skipped public speaking oh Ooh, man i think swerve is great on the mic same he's gen he's genuine <laughs> yeah he especially a few times yeah especially at the uh end of the show man i think he kind of proved that wrong but that's uh that's jumping ahead yeah yeah um he calls out will osprey uh he says uh he's running around calling himself the best bruv but he's not Jericho, Cody Rhodes, John Moxley, Adam Cole, Samoa Joe, uh, Brian Danielson, Kenny Omega, and Tanahashi. What do all these guys have in common? MJF beat them all. Ooh, and that is kind of something to brag yeah. about. <laughs> like, he's so young and did that already? Uh-huh. What? Yeah, yeah. Although Osprey's actually got a lot of those on his uh, his list too, uh, yeah, 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 no, no CM Punk or uh, Cody, but uh, he's he's about beat what Brian, Kenny Omega, quite a few of them. Uh, he, I bet he beat Tanahashi at some point, maybe not. Um, but yeah, he uh, makes fun of Will Osprey's, <laughs> uh, what does he call him? His disgusting British crooked yellow stained teeth <laughs> i'll never forget the uh austin powers that's where i like figured out about that uh stereotype uh british people have bad teeth apparently <laughs> uh he says he became the most hated man and the most loved which is pretty cool accomplishment too uh, he starts talking about people smearing his name, and then Roosh interrupts him. He tells MJF he never shuts up, and he's been uh, working hard while MJF was out. MJF says he didn't understand anything he said, uh, but I think he maybe made realized he made a mistake and maybe insinuating it was the accent or his country of origin and then he blamed it on the uh, production <laughs> yeah yeah so uh, he he i think he caught that in the moment he didn't want to like put you know yeah make it something it wasn't uh he admits uh he paid him to take out brian danielson and then he admits that uh roosh sold out arenas in mexico won the roh title and uh is a pretty vicious guy uh, MJF insults uh, Roosh in Spanish, and then Roosh uh, attacks MJF. Uh, M Security tries to break them up. They brawl. Uh, 
you know you know how they get loose and one goes to the other and they get pulled apart and again and again they finally get broken apart and uh yeah that was the end of that segment really great really good segment yeah yeah it was awesome yeah the whole time i was watching that uh, brawl i was like going through like every old mgf segment in my head and you know old mjf the second he got stepped to he would have rolled out of the ring and ran so i was like oh this is a like a grown more baby face ballsy mjf i love it dude good point i never even yeah thought about that aspect of it yeah he would have tucked tail and got out of there but no he just faced rouge yeah of all people head on and fought back equally yeah good yeah. point man yeah. yeah i remember uh remember the uh collision taping we were at when uh we were all excited because uh cody cody chung was out there it's like yeah oh oh it's roosh oh he's gonna get oh he got wrecked <laughs> it's like he didn't even get a minute <laughs> yeah yeah man uh i'm officially looking very forward to this match and i'm glad that they didn't just announce it they did this little build for it to get a little heat on it uh i think maybe they should do one more segment or something next week to build it up a little more and yeah we're good to go um yeah good stuff uh after that we get a roderick strong promo uh roddy says even the best laid out plans can fail uh, he calls out Swerve and says, the sun is setting on Swerve's AEW title reign. Uh, yeah. Uh, after that, we get a four-way match for the number one contender for the international title. Um, I didn't actually look at the card or what they announced before Dynamite. I don't know if they announced it at all, but I was uh, pretty excited to see. I didn't know who was going to be in it, but Orange Cassidy kyle o'reilly jay lethal love jay lethal and ray fenix perfect perfect four-way um the only odd man out i feel maybe kyle o'reilly because he just lost uh in a match against uh yeah, he's lost a few high profile matches now yeah that kind of didn't add up to me but it didn't you know completely make it unrealistic for me i just feel yeah. like maybe i don't know hook or someone could have yeah. i don't know i but yeah hook, no when, I, when I was too. watching the people come out i was like oh so this is a match to see who gets to pin D jay lethal first yeah yeah uh man jay lethal is entertaining hmm. like great. he can still nail that uh lethal injection the uh uh lethal combination yeah, love both love of those that. moves love them um yeah good stuff here uh did you catch i thought it was a subliminal message they had excalibur's woo energy drink teleprompter accidentally briefly pop up of what he was supposed to say oh that's funny i didn't catch like, that right before the bell man they bleep, it was a bl i had to like what was that i thought uh, it was like that that mercedes monet thing where they were gonna um i did do the qr code for that by the way oh that's funny <laughs> yeah i don't really understand what it was but yeah I'll, I'll get to that uh but yeah his uh woo energy teleprompter popped up on the main screen <laughs> for like uh -huh. half a second uh i paused it and read it um so let's see orange cassidy gets the best of kyle o'reilly uh with his hands in his pockets does the kip up uh fenix and o'reilly both uh do this little sequence where they end up uh kicking each other at the same time and they both go down crowd loved it i loved it uh those two are like i want to see them wrestle right like a one on one like now <laughs> uh we get a, another sequence where Kyle O'Reilly counters a stun dog millionaire from Orange Cassidy uh, right into a Juji Katami. Uh, woo! <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, then we got Fenix splashing uh, to break up the uh, Juji Katami. Uh, then we got Jay Lethal 
uh, doing a elbow drop onto Ray Fenix's head from the top rope, all in one, boom, 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 boom. Uh, O'Reilly uh, gets Jay Lethal in a Juji Katami. Orange Cassidy does his little slow. Well, he doesn't do the sl- only slow now. He starts that way and then, boom, yeah. boom. Love it. Uh, he starts doing that, but Ray Phoenix stomps O'Reilly. Also, uh, Jay Lethal goes for a figure four, uh, but Phoenix rolls him up for the win out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, Ray Phoenix will face uh, Will Osprey next week on Dino Might. I'm very looking forward to that. Man, are they going to send Osprey into this pay per view without a belt? That would be weird. That would be strange. Uh, no, I, I, man, I don't know what's going on anymore with any of that. And I'm kind of into it. It's, it's like, I'm having a hard time. They're, they're a little less predictable for me than they were now. And it's, uh, I don't know. I think it's a good thing. Cause like, part of me is like, oh no, A, B and C is going to happen. But I'm like, but I could also see, uh, see them, him dropping it and going like just pure world title picture. So I don't know. It's cool. Either way, I'll be happy. Yeah, yeah, kind of. I kind of understand that feeling, like we're on a roller coaster. Yeah, you know, like what's gonna happen? Like, yeah, it's a little less predictable. It's good stuff. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, after the match, Trent shows up with Don Callis uh, and a chair. Uh, Orange Cassidy grabs a chain, uh, gets in the ring. Uh, Statlander shows up to try to intervene uh stokely says stat is gonna uh stick her shoe so far up his ass he'll be uh coughing up shoe leather then statlander decks orange cassidy what unbelievable i was like oh no and he can't even defend himself he's never gonna (laughs) fight a lady uh so then we got willow running out to uh run off statlander and essentially save orange cassidy (laughs) <laughs> yeah that was awesome I, i'm loving it it's kind of like when aw was like for me a peak it's starting to feel like a living breathing world again you know like all these weird interactions even like mjf's promo he's not just like i'm fighting roosh and this is it he was like no he's listed everybody like it's uh yeah to me like i think aw is at its best when it feel doesn't feel like a uh a match factory and it actually feels like a living breathing universe so uh, I feel like they're getting back to it. Yeah, me too. There's no, uh, I like the uh, the phrase that Steve and Larson coined, Cody Island. There's mm-hmm. no Cody who has their own world. Like everyone's kind of in it. Like yeah. it's good, really good. Yeah. So uh, um, you think we're going to get like a intergender or maybe mixed tag match? Gotta be, man. Uh, I think they should pull the trigger on an intergender and just go for it like they've done one match like that and that was at the jericho cruise that's right I think it was kenny kenny and reho right yeah can't remember who they faced but yeah i think they should actually pull the trigger on that and uh i think it'll pay off i really want to see that but even if we get a mixed tag i'm cool with that too so yeah awesome um hopefully we get that uh after that we get the first chris jericho segment of the night uh he arrives with big bill and uh brian keith he tells the driver in his over-the-top swarmy tone uh i've held a valid driver's license for over 35 years you should always stop completely at signs at stop signs uh then he tells the cameraman how to keep the camera steady, and he takes the camera. Uh, Big Bill says it's sunny outside, and he appreciates the little things in life. <laughs> Love it, dude. The, Big Bill is killing me right now. Uh, yeah, really good. So this segment, was I'm, I was perfectly okay with it. I laughed. I thought it was good. Uh, but we'll see how the show progresses. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, after that, we get a Willow Nightingale promo. She says uh, she lost to Mercedes Monet, uh, and, or she lost the TBS championship to Mercedes Monet, and she has uh, 
she had her pinned for an eight count and her friends stabbed her in the back and her smile is her strength. But after what happened, you don't know how dangerous that can be. That was great. Great delivery. Um, yeah, that match with Mercedes really elevated her a lot. Like she, she's yeah. a star. Yeah, she 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 went from like badass indie wrestler to oh shit no she's like legit top of the women's world like you know like very very few are like her Monet Becky Lynch like I I think she's I think she's right up there with them Rhea Ripley like for for me uh for me yeah Will, Willow's uh kind of breathing that rarefied air and uh, I'm glad she didn't just go away after losing the belt she's still. Uh, really kind of a major player in the storylines yeah i'm really happy about that too uh her 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 attitude and her aura is super infectious she's super over with all the fans so yeah keep her coming Uh, yeah she's not just happy positive girl like she's badass and can turn it on when she needs to too which i think is a kind of a cool dynamic yeah um it's kind of neat to see the uh uh comparison of like willow can get fired up and dangerous and uh serious and then statlander turned heel to be dangerous and serious and it's kind of a neat dynamic uh how they both you know can be equally intimidating uh want a heel want a face so i think it's really cool i also love the uh the line you know and i don't trust soakley as far as i can throw him which was surprisingly far. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, she she's stuff. killing me. Yeah, really good stuff. Love Willow. Um, after that, we get Christopher Daniels uh, announcing an impromptu TNT title qualifier match. Uh, love it. Um, so far, we've got Takeshita qualifying. He uh, beat Penta. Yep. On a rampage, I think. <laughs> uh never gonna watch that uh yeah. so yeah but it was uh pretty cool here we got mark briscoe versus brian cage which uh man i can't remember what he said he's got like many years left on his contract i read yeah uh like a long time so he had to assign like a seven-year contract when he resigned. <laughs> like it's like 2028 or something i think oh my god and that was like two years ago that he resigned uh so yeah he's uh he might as well have got the tattoo that (laughs) jf got uh but no i love brian cage like i wasn't quite sure what to think of him when he showed up and remember his moxley world title match where he tapped out and whatnot like i thought he was going to be a bigger threat and they were going to make him a main event guy um but that didn't end up happening I know we got hurt there for a while and was out for for a good good minute, but I think he's in a, in a perfect spot. Like, and I think he's happy with it too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, he. Uh, yeah, especially like the last few months. Like, I know it always shows when a wrestler's like into what they're doing and enjoying their work. And he seems to be. Yeah, like you said, he's. I don't know. Something's just sort of changed in the last few months, and I'm like, oh no, he's clearly having a good time doing what he's doing man he's probably getting a nice paycheck yeah. getting to perform uh he they're putting him on tv a lot yeah like a lot uh yeah i i think uh possibly that he, they gotta give him a title like a tnt or something at some point uh you know he's he's gonna earn it i know he is so oh, yeah um yeah good stuff mark briscoe brian cage qualifier match uh brian cage overpowers briscoe initially but briscoe gets some offense in uh with a diving drop kick to the outside he uh throws a chair in the ring but paul turner catches it smooth as butter um and throws it out uh cage pummels briscoe on the floor then does his patented uh suplex into the ring from the apron uh I absolutely love that move. Love it, love it. Um, Let's see. Don Callis and Takeshita are watching on from the stands. Uh, Briscoe uses a little redneck kung fu to stun Brian Cage. 
Briscoe grabs another chair, uses it to uh, jump off and dive onto Cage onto the floor. I love this. He kind of he hits Brian Cage, but he kind of overshoots just a bit and hits one of these uh, AEW bobbleheads. Yeah, and he just rips it out of the box and taps yep. it on the head. Oh my god! I lost my mind when I saw that. What an impromptu, awesome guy. Uh, then we got uh, Jack Perry watching on from the back. Uh, Cage gets multiple near falls onto Briscoe. Briscoe kicks out. Uh, Cage eats a Death Valley driver, then a froggy bow for the win. Uh, Mark Briscoe holds up his ROH title. I thought it was the TNT for a second. I'm like, right? oh, did he go? Uh, don't touch the that? belt. Don't touch the belt uh but yeah no it was good uh, i liked when he walked up to the tnt and looked at his belt and then yeah that the you know yeah it's good stuff yeah he uh he needed that win C- cage didn't need the win i don't feel he's uh you know like I, like i was saying before he's fine where he's at he loses most of his <laughs> high profile matches yeah. but uh you know that can change later on down the line <laughs> yeah, no, and like Mark Briscoe, like he's another guy who's like he can cut a promo, he can wrestle, he can be comedic, he can be serious, he can have an amazing blood match, or he can just be kind of a goofy guy. Like, there's not much that dude can't do. Like, he's very good at where he's at, but like, I also kind of want to see him higher up on the card at some point, too. Like, they've got a yeah. lot of a lot of talent just kind of waiting to jump up into those spots. Him being a ROH world champion isn't, you know, a small thing either. Not yeah. a small feat. So that's some pretty cool stuff to chew on there. Um, after the match, Jack Perry says uh, the universe has already chosen him uh, to be the next TNT champion. Um, after that, we get a Samoa Joe and Hook interview. Uh, they're interrupted by Tony Neese and Ari Davari. Uh, Tony Neef says, uh, after all these years, you're still eating that crap. Uh, Hook says, after all these years, you're still losing matches. <laughs> Snap. Uh, also, don't disrespect the Funnian. The Funnians are goaded. Yeah, man. Speaking of, have you tried the Wavy Lay's Funyun flavor? No. Unbelievable. Try them. <laughs> they're good. Okay, I'll be right back. Uh, they're, yeah, yeah, they're they're vegan too, which is perfect nice. for me. <laughs> D- don't hate me, audience. I am vegan. <laughs> yeah, I've also seen uh, the guy guy cook an entire pig. So, yeah. Hey, I love cooking meat. I don't hate <laughs> meat. I know I know it tastes good. I know it's delicious, and I love cooking good food and serving it to people. I do it for a living. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, yeah. I appreciate meat. <laughs> uh, let's see. They grab Hook's chips, and uh, he kind of lunges towards him, but Joe holds him back. Uh, and Joe says uh, they only talk to him like that because uh, all the security around, and they'll deal with them on their own time. Um, the only thing I liked it all, but I thought they were going after the learning tree right i wonder that maybe they'll they'll heat up and then circle around to them or something they need those like first of a couple of quick wins to you know establish they're a threat although it's hooking some hooking samoa joe like of course they're a threat god yeah what a freaking duo man really really liking that yeah i'm just a little little uh confused about their jericho uh learning tree situation uh, speaking of Jericho, we get another Jericho segment. Uh, him and uh, Big Bill and Brian Keith walk up to Daddy Magic and Angelo Parker. Uh, Jericho in his over-the-top swarmy voice, he uh, congratulates Daddy Magic for taking over commentary on Rampage and tells him, make sure to enunciate. And then he's like, what? And Big Bill's like, 
Enunciate. <laughs> uh, Daddy Magic says uh, something to the effect of shove it up your ass. And uh, <laughs> Big Bill, instead of getting mad, he just goes, ooh, got me. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. Uh, then we got Jericho telling uh, or congratulating Angelo Parker for getting married uh, to Ruby Soho. Cool. And having a baby on the way. Uh, he, tell, he tells him, uh, remember, it's easy. Uh, something to eat, activities, uh, sleep, and you. And repeat. Remember, it's easy. That sounds like good <laughs> parenting advice, honestly. Right? I'm not going to lie. That sounds pretty good. Remember, uh, I'm not only an eight-time world champion, I'm a three-time father. <laughs> Dude, uh, yeah, this this thing didn't bother me. I did not mind it at all. It was uh, pretty funny. Uh, I was into it. Um, but yeah, we'll see uh, how the show progress progresses. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Let's see, after that, we get the acclaimed, what we think is going to be an acclaimed segment. Uh, as they walk out, Max Caster is starting to rap, but the Young Bucks appear on the big screen, and they cut their mics, and they have cut their segment. Ooh. Ooh. The crowd shouts, or uh, chants, bullshit, bullshit. Uh, the acclaimed look pretty angry, and they storm back uh, back up the stage and back, uh, backstage. Um, after that, we get a Swerve Strickland promo. Uh, he welcomes back MJF, calls him a little bitch. Uh, he says he's going to deal with MJF, just not in the way he'll like. Um, yeah, I can't wait for Swerve versus MJF, man. And that's what I needed, man. They teased that way yeah. back in, like, November. Yeah, like, I, I was looking forward to that. Whew. Yeah, dude. So, yeah. I, I love how they're following through with that, coming full circle. And they, they've got history, too, I think, from the indies, right? Or something like that. Unsure. Yeah. Hmm. I'll have to look in there. I can't remember. Uh, let's see. Then he uh, shows a contract for the main event for Forbidden Door, tells Nana to deliver it to Will Ospreay. Uh, he tells Roddy that he's he's the mountain of pro wrestling and he's going to bury Roddy under it. Uh, he said uh, also he wants to be on Team AEW next time a uh, team is assembled. Uh, blood and guts. Heck yeah. Yeah, yeah that's man. Gotta, that's got to be the next big step. Uh, let's uh, fantasy book our Team AEW for blood and guts. I'll go first. Uh, obviously, Swerve, mm -hmm. um, MJF, because he brought it, he kind of brought up the, the Bucks yeah. a little bit in his promo. Can they coexist? Uh, let's see. I would also like to have, um, shit, Danielson again. Yeah. Or, ooh, here's something to chew on. Could Danielson? Are you familiar with the uh, WCW invasion, the Alliance? Yeah, much? yeah, yeah. How Stone Cold turned. Do you remember yeah. that? Uh huh. I think Brian could be that. Ooh, that's that's just something in the back of my mind. Uh, so yeah, Swerve, MJF, Danielson, and do 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 do. Let me think here. Who would be a great fourth man, brother? Um, not Moxley. Eh, Moxley might work. Um, I think that'd be the bigger swerve if, if Moxley turned on right? Team AEW. I yeah, think that need, would work he'd better. He'd need to mix it up, and him like throwing on a suit and stuff would actually be kind of cool. Damn. Okay. Shit. Yeah, that's what I want. Um, all right, man. Who would be the best fourth man? Well, I think of that. You tell me what you think. All right, so got gotta go with Swerve because that's kind of already the obvious one. Uh, speaking of kind that coexist, um, he got kicked out of the elite. Hangman Adam Page. Oh, ooh, ooh okay, Kenny. 
Also yep. fired by the elite. Kenny's my fourth. Yeah. And <laughs> oh man, who else would be good? Yeah, see now I don't got a good fourth. <laughs> hmm. uh, who else yeah, has been wrestling with the elite? Yeah. That's a pretty strong three though. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh anyway, I can't wait for that. Uh I think no, they can't do that at uh, for bit or uh, all in because there's too many other things. Yeah, maybe all out though. Yeah, all out. There you go. Uh, yeah, let's uh, hope for blood and guts and all out, man. That could work. Um, cool. After that, we get a really cool Mercedes Monet video package. I like how she puts over Japanese women's wrestling, calls out Stephanie Vacor. Uh, she says she's gonna win the New Japan. Uh, strong women's title back. Uh, I think that would probably be the right path for her. Uh, come full circle, get that belt back because it is title for title. Yeah, I saw that match graphic today and I was like, no way, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's the direction we're gonna go here. But they're gonna, she's gonna make Stephanie Vacor a international star, popular in America after that. So yeah yeah you know like monet like one of her biggest selling points is her insane levels of selling like almost like osprey levels like when, when she gets hits her body contorts she looks like she's dead you know she's just gonna ma- make vacuum look like, like a million bucks yeah yeah i'm uh really looking forward to that i hope we get a stephanie vacuum match in AEW before forbidden door i'm sure Something, they anything they got they got they gotta heat it up a little yeah, that, that'd be great. Um, yeah, really looking forward to that. Can't wait to uh, watch her uh, take on Mercedes, even though I know the outcome, uh, but still the uh, the journey yep. <laughs> that matters. So um, cool. After this, again, coming full circle after all the uh, injuries and visa issues, we got Team BCC fully assembled yeah uh the great yuda is back holy shit uh very happy to see him man uh that's what happens man when you're gone for so long like when you come back it makes you that much cooler <laughs> yeah yeah that was uh no nah, it was good and uh i feel like uh like he came back and it, it was he didn't lose a step like he was he's always been a dynamic wrestler and it was like oh no i forgot how awesome he was he was really good yeah, yeah. I mean, so good. Uh, we'll get to it, but he actually won the match yeah. <laughs> for his team. Uh, but yeah, Team CMLL. Uh, let's see. My top favorite guy out of this uh, team, Volador Jr. Oof, He's yeah. my favorite CMLL guy, uh, followed by uh, Esfinge. He's my second favorite. Uh, Magnus is pretty damn cool. And uh, Ruhing, Ruhing, Ruhido. Ruhito. Uh he's great too. I liked his uh fuzzy jacket and his yeah, lion mask. Cool. Uh cool stuff. Yeah, man. These guys are no joke. Like there's a reason why they're, you know, top guys in Mexico. Um unbelievable. Like the crowd was so into it. They were hot, hot, yeah. hot for this match. Yeah, um, I don't know what it is about like specifically the CML guys. Like like for me, like I, I enjoy a bit of Lucha Libre, but it's usually very um, uh, choreographed feeling. Like you know, it's like really flippy. But there's like they kind of mix mix like some strong style in there. Like their stuff always looks like really legit while being flat. Kind of like watching Swerve Strickland for me. I was like, man, like he does crazy stuff, but none of it ever looks like uh, like like um, choreographed. It, it, it always it always looks spot on. Uh, so yeah, no, I was like, I kind of want to start like following that more if there's more time in the day, which there isn't. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I was really liking the triple a stuff they were doing, but, uh, with Conan being the top booker in triple a, uh, he's had so many negative toxic things to say about Tony Khan and AEW in the past six, seven months. Like, I'm just kind of over yeah. over triple A. Like CMLL has better talent. I'm more excited to watch them wrestle. Apart from 
uh, Vikingo. Yeah, he's my favorite AAA guy, and I think I think AEW is going to end up signing him anyway. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, this is an amazing match. Like almost so much, like you just need to watch it. Like I couldn't even write down everything that happened. Clearly, uh, but some of my favorite stuff here: uh, if Spinghe gives Claudio and Moxley a super kick, uh, and then a backbreaker to Yuta and Danielson. Um, he then monkey flips Claudio across the entire <laughs> ring. Who does that to Claudio? <laughs> right? Are you kidding me? Um, Claudio gets Magnus in the giant swing into the uh, beautiful drop kick combo from Moxley. Uh, love it when they do that. Uh, Volador Jr. gives Claudio a code red. <laughs> sure. Why not? Uh, why not? Uh, Volador gives Claudio a Deja Vu Hurricane Rana. Uh, Wheeler Yuta gets Rohingo, Rohito in a seat belt for the win. Excellent match. Great, yeah. great, great match. Uh, yeah, again, I couldn't even say everything that happened, but yeah, unbelievable. Anyone listening, go back and watch the match. You're going to be uh, very satisfied. Yeah, bringing it back. <laughs> uh yeah great stuff man yeah uh what do you think of these cmll guys man Oof, man um uh, yeah like i said i i yeah like the triple a comparisons uh was right i like like there's what yeah vikingo is there anybody else that really jumps out at me not a ton but like every single one of these guys i've seen like hechicero all the guys in this match i like Oh man, give me more, please. I, I hope they continue this partnership because um uh, the the one thing that's kind of disappointing to me is I've sort of been like mostly sticking to the BCC. Like I want to see some more matchups. Like um yeah, yeah I, I'm into it. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I think they're great. Please keep it up. Apparently they got their visa issues all ironed out, everything's good. Nice. Um, yeah, we, we could uh see a beautiful beautiful relationship blossoming here which i'm all in for um cool yeah after that we got the uh another jericho segment the one that we both feel probably didn't need to be there uh he's back in catering there's some rando guy there scooping some chicken and dumplings uh jericho has to go up and uh you know i've been (laughs) whatever scooping (laughs) chicken and dumplings for years this is how you do it and then he does it and a bunch falls out of the bowl. Yeah, yeah. I was like, come on. Uh yeah, I think they could have cut that one out. Yeah, I uh, know. I mean, comedy generally has a rule of threes, and they ended up doing four segments all day. And I thought this was the weakest. I think if they kept it to three, it would have been more impactful. Yeah, they, they lost me on this one. I didn't I didn't laugh at all. Like yeah. I was just like, uh if it maybe if it was someone we knew, right? Maybe like Chuck Taylor or something like Eddie Kingston. Come on. Eddie Kingston's the king of catering. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it would have worked if it was someone who we knew who it was. Um, cool. Yeah. After that, we get a really great fired up, motivated Daniel Garcia promo, man. Like he is motivated yeah. right now. He no, that was a whole gold. package too. That was a video package, right? Like, y- yeah. Yeah. They put some production into it. Yeah, they were showing, you know, the aftermath of his car wreck. Uh, He says he drove all over uh, to wrestle for no money, got in a car crash, broke both of his legs. Uh, He says you have to uh, go out and take opportunities. Uh, He has uh, to tap into his old self, and you can't outrun or outwork him. Uh, yeah, it was great. Great promo, passion, uh, motion. Uh, yeah, they need to really start giving him the ball to run with. Yeah, I think sure. that's a sign of things to come. Like he's had a couple decent high profile matches lately. And that now this video package, it feels like they're kind of poised to give him a bit, a bit of a push. They think, is he going to be in that? Is he in that tournament? Not yet. I mean, yeah. he's going, he's calling out Will Ospreay. Oh, okay. Yeah, true. Which, uh, what if he gets it, man? 
<laughs> That'd be cool. But yeah, get a fucking huge shine for him. Put a belt on him and the Osprey's going after the world title. Because that mm-hmm. is like if you start thinking about it, like that that other title kind of does convolute that whole thing. It was like, oh, that'd be cool. I that like the way we had to put your stamp on your next big guy. Yeah. Yeah. He he's the future for damn sure. Yeah. That could that could be uh, his Hogan Warrior. Yeah, dude. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. The the second for one, sure. though, not the first. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> ugh. yeah. It's what I like to call the superior Hogan Warrior match. Yeah, yeah. The, talking Halloween Havoc. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> God, that was disgusting. Uh yeah, what a shame. They should have not even even hired the warrior for WCW. Uh yeah, I, I when I was I was little during all that, and I was so stoked on all that when it was going on. But and I didn't even understand it was shit. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, I was too. too you're just young like you're just like oh look at this guy, he's awesome. You yep, go back and yep. watch it, you're like man, young me was stupid. Yeah, yeah, I was, <laughs> I was, I was uh, super into just seeing all the old WWF guys end up in WCW. That, that was really was all trip. I cared about. Yeah, that was a trip. Like when you're that young to understand, and you're just like, anything is possible. Anything can happen. Ted DiBiase, uh, Virgil, Ultimate Warrior, the Nasty Boys, you name it. Uh, Big Boss Man. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Big Bubba is what they called him. Uh, But yeah, it it was, uh, I thought it was cool back then, but it's. uh, uh, uh. Um, Let's see. After that, we get a uh, backstage segment with the acclaimed. They confront the Young Bucks. Uh, They got security in their room. uh, And they say they're going to have a uh, have to face them sooner or later. And uh, Max Caster kind of throws in like, yeah, the company's doing real good right now. (laughs) So I think that was a little shoot. A little bit. (laughs) To be honest uh but yeah so are we gonna get young bucks acclaimed at forbidden door i hope so uh the the tag belts the tag division in general has been kind of uh oh a couple of random tag team throw togethers and not much else like i i, I thought that like when uh, aw launched like bringing back t- serious tag wrestling was kind of part of the mission statement and it feels not so much right now yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, hopefully we get that match. Uh, even if we get it on a a dynamite or something. I mean, shit, Forbidden Door is only like three weeks away. Yeah. So yeah, I'm okay with that. However, it happens. Uh, after that, we got uh, Christian Cage uh, talking to the Young Bucks. He said he was screwed out of the AW title at Double or Nothing, and he wants another title shot. Uh, Matthew says he wishes he can give every good wrestler a title and we'll see what he can do. Uh, Christian seems appeased with that for the time being. Uh, And then as they walk away, Nicholas (laughs) asks Christian what his shoe size is to get him a pair of uh, Young Buck Christian looks very tickled too. He's like, ooh. He says 12. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I I got a kick out of that. I really loved it. Um, You know, I watch a lot of uh, other pro wrestling reviews and commentary and whatnot. And I can't remember what show I was watching, but they made a point kind of about Jericho. Like, we're already getting the, like, over-the-top, swarmy shit from the Young Bucks. That's why the Jericho thing isn't really hitting as yeah. well because yeah. the young bucks are already doing it and they're doing it great yeah yeah no w- like what culture kind of made a similar one and they 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 are like i think jericho's so far gone he doesn't even know who he's stealing from anymore yeah yeah <laughs> pretty much yeah oh, yeah i don't know how this is going to end for it but oh i don't know man uh let's see after that we get <laughs> Mariah May versus Soraya finally after that uh, mistake of uh, announcing the match for last week. <laughs> uh, we got Tony Storm on commentary, which uh, I always love. 
uh, Soraya attacks Mariah May uh, from the get-go and rips off her outcast jacket, which I like Mariah May was in the uh, yeah the rock, outcast. That, rock, that part of the old gimmick. And yeah, Soraya yep. definitely took exception to that. <laughs> but dude, loved it. But that little little bit of extra stuff, man, that matters. They put effort yeah. into that, you know? Smart, good stuff. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Tony Storm says, uh, I hope she uh, something like slaps her tits off. And she says, uh, uh, AEW with a breast wrestle. Yes. <laughs> Brilliant. Love it. Uh, let's see. Mariah, uh, Mariah May does her uh, spinning slam on Soraya. Uh, Soraya runs away, avoiding May, uh, in and out of the ring, running away, running away. Uh, eventually, Soraya throws Mariah May into the barricade and takes a drink of water. Uh, I think that went into picture in picture when they came back. Uh, Mariah May hit Soraya with a handstand hurricanrana. Uh, with those super long legs. Yeah. Uh, I love that move. Yeah. Uh, Mariah May is pretty tall. <laughs> uh, yeah. She's, she's, I think she's, uh, incredible. Uh, let's see. She, then she does a diving drop kick on Soraya. Man, Soraya hits a DDT on Mariah May and drops her right on her head, yeah. man. That looked, that I had evil intentions. I loved it. Yeah, uh, she covers, but Mariah May kicks out. Uh, Soraya ends up getting Mariah May in this crazy submission move where she's basically tied up and hovering in midair while Soraya squats with her. Yeah. Uh, Mariah May ends up tapping, dude. I did not see that coming at yeah, all. It was cool. Yeah, I, I think maybe the part of the story beat too was, uh, that they might eventually play in, which is uh, her not throwing in the towel this time. Which, oh, so you don't care about me anymore? Like, it might go, like, that direction. Ooh, why didn't you throw in the towel for me? Yeah. Good point, man. That that would add some uh, uh, spice to it. Uh, let's see. Soraya. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, Mariah May taps. Tony Storm runs in to comfort Mariah May, but gets attacked. And then out of nowhere, Mina Shirakawa runs in to save Mariah May. Man, I love that little that little lady. Always smiling, bubbly. Like I she to me is what Riho needed to be. Right? Does that yeah. make sense? Oh yeah, no, it's Rio always felt kind of anime cartoonish where she like, oh no, she almost like Willow. Like She's bubbly and happy to be there. She's also going to wreck your day and take your head off. Yeah. Yeah. And she is very lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta say that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She uh, comes in to save uh, Mariah May. Uh, <laughs> Tony, uh, Tony Storm and uh, Mina Shirakawa bump chess like uh, umpires uh -huh. and coaches do in baseball. And then Mariah May grabs both women and puts them on her bosom. <laughs> <laughs> puts her head on them. Uh, love it. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I like this uh, brewing storyline. I mean, it's going to be Tony Storm and Mina Shirakawa at Forbidden Door. So yep. kind of awesome. I'm liking how this is going. Uh, yeah, good stuff. I did not see Mariah May tapping at all. No, me neither. I don't like, know that like, she physically could have. Maybe she just verbally had to give up because she would tie it up like a pretzel. That was amazing. Uh, I can't remember what they called it, but she uh, she used to do that a few times, at least in NXT. I don't even know if she used it on the main roster, but uh, yeah. Paige has done that before as, as Paige. Yeah, cool. Yeah, love it. I mean, she's she looks way better in the ring now than she did when she first yeah. Returned. Yeah. Uh what, she, she seven started... years of ring rust. Yeah, man. <laughs> she sh shook that off, man. It is good. I'm really enjoying watching her. She's uh brutal, uh violent. Love it. She's yeah. so talented, and I'm 
so happy she got to wrestle again after that right. long of not. So, yeah, her, Christian Cage, Adam Copeland, uh, Brian Danielson, mm-hmm. kudos to all of them for returning from retirement and <laughs> staying. Uh, basically, yeah, yeah, staying. <laughs> and and AEW is the one who gave them the chance to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty it's pretty mind blowing. Like like you say, like you say it all the time. Nostalgia is a hell of a drug, and they're just like, here, here's a bunch of more dream matches you never thought you'd get to see. Right on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh yeah, good stuff. I really enjoyed this match. Uh it wasn't that long or complicated, but it told a great story. Yeah. Which yeah. is what I'm what I'm here for. Yeah, I'm um, very excited for Forbidden Door. Ooh. And like now, yeah. like all like the math, I'm like the the math behind it all. I'm like, okay, how are they gonna get to this, this, and this at all in? Like, uh man, that's gonna be massive. I heard they're not they're doing what stadium seating this time, like it's basically sold out. So really it's, yeah. Ooh. So it's not like the eighty thousand, it's like fifty thousand, but it's big gate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, they might have to open up more seats too. Hopefully. Uh yeah dude who depending on you know the card and the build i think they could really really promote it um cool yeah we get our fourth jericho uh segment which uh this one i liked the dumpling i didn't yeah uh man i wish they would have done the dumpling bit with a member of the devil dumpling right gang. adam cole baby Ooh, adam cole uh, but yeah, Jericho walks up to private party and uh says he doesn't like that their uh uh their parties are private, they need to be more inclusive, they should be called public party. <laughs> uh Isaiah says that's not their style. Jericho invites them on TV time with Chris Jericho next week. Uh as they walk away, Isaiah mocks Jericho uh yeah this is okay i uh i enjoyed yeah. it it was okay. yeah and it's teasing next week it's advancing story like i said like i i felt like everyone was pretty good it was at least chuckle worthy except the, yeah, the 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 food one was just kind of like me uh and like i yeah. said comedy man the rule of threes stick to three segments four was weird yeah yeah uh but yeah this one I enjoyed. I got a chuckle out of it. I like Private Party. I'm glad Mark Quinn is back. Yeah. Uh, I want to see them. I want them with the freaking belts. Damn it. <laughs> long like, overdue. That'd be a long overdue. We're not going to get uh, Best Friends with it, which should have got it. We're not going to get Proud and Powerful with it. That's yeah. done. That ship sailed. We're not going to get uh, Uno and Grayson. That yeah. ship sailed. Uh, yeah, Grayson got released like a couple Again. months ago. <laughs> Again. Uh so yeah, that'll never happen. Private parties, the last one that should have had it, never did. So yeah. um yeah, after that we get uh Brian Danielson promo. He puts over Wheelie Wheeler Yuda, uh congratulates him for coming back and getting the win. He reminds us that this is his final year of full time wrestling and he lost the c2 he lost against okada he loses and loses and loses he lost anarchy in the in the arena uh but he got fired up hearing about the owen cup heart and the winner getting a shot at the AEW world championship at wembley stadium he says he's going out on top uh Man, that wouldn't that be a swerve if they put that uh, swerve? I say, <laughs> wouldn't that be a, a swerve if they, man, put that belt on Danielson? Yeah, or just like some weird Chandler level fantasy booking. Uh, Osprey does take it at Forbidden Door. Danielson wins the tournament. Danielson Osprey two in Wembley and. In- <laughs> could think they could outdo their first match. Whoa. Would you want the British guy to lose in England? Kinda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> uh but yeah, that's kind of a, a little rumor going around on the uh on the uh internet wrestling community that that could work. 
Danielson should get that belt. Um, yeah, that'd be a, that'd be a, definitely a uh, unexpected turn of events, wouldn't it? Ah, oh, it'd be amazing. That like that story, man. Like, what would they ha- what would they do to try to outdo the other match? Because that was a damn near right? perfect match. Like, wh- like would it be the story? Like, is he gonna bring out the tire driver again? Like, what? Like... Danielson does it to him. Yeah, that's the only thing left to do. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm kind of secretly rooting for that. Right. Um. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, I don't know though, man. I don't think Swerve should lose it at Forbidden no. Door. No, that's a I, I, it's a good problem to have. I mean, you got, I got like ah, like I'd be bummed, but at the same time, I'm like, well, it's Osprey, he's amazing. <laughs> I think I don't think Osprey needs to main event Wembley. I no. think put him on the like semi main event. I'm open. Uh, yeah, you you yeah. want to set the tone for the night? fucking best best match and get the get that crowd uh like fired up so they could hear it all the way from paris like there you go yeah maybe they could uh have it to where he's facing one of the don Callis family because they finally get him out of that faction and maybe him and takeshita again uh something like or will hobbs i don't know um but I think I heard them mention briefly that Will Hobbs will be back for the TNT tournament. Oh, nice. Uh, coming up. I think he's maybe all healed up. So cool. I'm looking uh, forward to seeing maybe, him again. I thought I thought I heard Hobbs being mentioned, but yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, <laughs> uh, cool. Let's see here. All right. We're already at our main event here. Uh, Swerve Strickland defending the AEW World Championship against Roderick Strong. And my God, man, they made Roderick Strong look so good. Yeah. I mean, they, they, I say they, he made himself look good. Um, yeah, he looked like a legitimate threat mm-hmm. to Swerve's title reign. Yeah. That dude can go. Like, I, I totally understand your admiration for Roderick Strong. Uh, he he's so much better than what he was when he was with you know yeah. Devil, Devil Dump. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was funny. Yeah, but now he's like a legitimate threat, and he's violent and vicious, <laughs> and whew, good stuff, man. Yeah, yeah, I do. Before you jump into it, uh, to spoil it a little, I love the story beat where uh, he um. Uh, uh, Swerve tried to take his knee out, and he's like, "Fine, I'll use the turnbuckle to break your back." <laughs> I was like, "Genius! I love it." <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Uh, let's see. If Swerve gives Roddy a uh, handstand. Tiaris Roderick Strong dodges a house call and rolls out of the ring. Uh, Swerve attacks Roddy's knee, and oh. then Swerve goes for a Swerve stomp, but. Matt Taven distracts uh, Swerve and gave Rodri, uh, Roderick Strong a chance to get up. Roderick gives Swerve a backbreaker on the turnbuckle. Uh, he's like, I don't even need my knee. <laughs> uh, Swerve counters a backbreaker into a Swerve stomp. <laughs> what? Yeah. I'm like like that dude just blah, 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 that, yeah that, that looks like it belonged in like uh some like japanese anime i was like that should not have been f- physically possible i don't understand how we did that oh and swerve is something special man uh man roger kicks out of a flatliner then a brain buster combo uh then a power slam gets a two count uh Roderick Strong drops Swerve's head on the apron while on the floor. Uh Roderick Strong does his uh I love this. He keeps doing it. He runs the ropes and does elbow strikes on each return. <laughs> like that's so cool. Uh I've never seen that anywhere in my life in wrestling. <laughs> uh uh then he power bombs Swerve for a two count. Uh then a running boot on Swerve for another two count. A lot of near falls in this match. Yeah. Uh, and the crowd was actually like 
not really sure. Like, yeah, no, they they were believable. Times. Like, it, it was like, oh, I'm kind of biting on these. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, Swerve ends up dodging uh, uh, Roderick Strong off the apron and stomps him. Uh, Swerve hits the house call uh, for the win. Uh, fire match, man. Unbelievable. We got Swerve uh, uh, dancing with the uh, old lady in the front row. Mm-hmm. Uh, then the show ends, man. Great main event. Like, that was yeah. that was really good. All in all, I was into the whole show. I thought it moved. It had a great pace. It's one of those ones mm-hmm. where, like, when the main event came out, I was like, oh, already? Like, yeah. Yeah, I didn't like, yeah, like like you always say, the phone test. Like, I wasn't yeah. on my phone. Like, uh, I was even kind of interested in the picture in picture, like trying to watch what happens during that. Um, yeah, man, I got to address the elephant in the room, man. Dynamite is a completely different and better show than Collision. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I Collision's feel- slipping. Yeah, yeah. The uh, man for a while, Collision was kind of becoming my favorite show. And then all of a sudden, uh, in the last month, month and a half, like I, I, if I, if I, if I, if I wasn't reviewing it, don't know that I'd necessarily be watching it. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, like I said, we'll give it a couple more. And if we're not really that into it, or nothing really cool happens, let's. Uh, uh just r- run through the results and yeah. maybe any quick comments we have on it and just review some retro match or yeah. something or that new vice uh show yeah. yes dude you what did you watch it yet no no i wish i had that kind of time <laughs> yeah uh it is on youtube i mean i don't oh, know if, yeah. do you uh you have the hulu tv right yeah 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 it, the, the vice is on that too that's oh, where cool. i recorded it yeah it's really great man a lot of people um are saying like oh another wcw retrospective blah 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 but like there really hasn't been one of these made in like 10 15 years so no uh, and and like the guys who made it like it's the same dudes that did uh dark side right like mm -hmm. they're fantastic like like the the their style is great i mean uh like uh, I'm interested to see it, to see it. Yeah, I watched uh, episode one. Uh, it was really great, man. We got a lot of uh, insight from Eric Bischoff. Um, yeah, uh, Bret Hart. He's pretty bitter. Uh, Weird. Kevin Sullivan. Yeah, Kevin Sullivan. Uh, he's got some good insight from him. Uh, no Vince Russo. I don't know if he's even going to be in it, <laughs> but uh, I blame him. Bro, <laughs> but no, Kevin Sullivan uh, had it right. It, like it, it wasn't any one thing. It was death by a thousand cuts. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's a really great uh, series. I can't wait for episode two. Uh, yeah, man, if you get a get a chance, check that out. I told Chandler to check it out. It was really good. Cool. Um, you know me, I'm the uh, diehard WCW fan. Like when they died. A, part of me died oh yeah like i i didn't even care about wrestling anymore like it's like what's the point <laughs> like <laughs> that's how i felt like dude i i i had like five year uh subscription to wcw magazine i never oh, missed man. an issue like dude i was like in it in it in it and then it was my freshman year man like i uh spent the summer with my grandparents uh and then let's see i came back and i i kind of missed a lot of wcw we didn't have cable yeah in my actual home my grandparents had the cable and i'd watch nitro during the school year at my friend's house and i don't know what i was doing I, i missed like a good month or two of of uh dynamite or not (laughs) nitro (laughs) and uh I, I get back to school and and somehow wrestling came up. They're like, I overheard like, yeah, WCW got bought out. I was like, huh. wait, what? what? Like, yeah, WWF bought them. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, bull dude, crap. Just, That's just story. Yeah. And like, I don't know, man. It wasn't easy to just hop on Google and like yeah. look that up in 2001. So 
yeah, I figured out what happened. And yeah, man, WCW was my jam, dude. It was uh, really all I cared about. I, I just, anything about WWF just like turned me off, disgusted yeah. me. Like it didn't, it didn't do it for me. Like, well, there's no Hulk Hogan. There's no Ric Flair. There's no Macho Man. There's no Sting. Like, why would I even <laughs> watch this? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I now older, I appreciate what they did. I know yeah. they, they won the war. They figured out how to be edgier. They figured out how to uh, get that fan base back with the, the attitude, the uh, uh, more violence, the sarcasm, the, uh, the sex cells, you know, yeah. like that's what they were doing. And they, they, they got the edge. So uh, yeah. yeah and they had it. edge. And they had edge. So, yeah, man. But yeah, this uh, this show is super uh, super interesting to me. Uh, yeah, man, nostalgia is one hell of a drug. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, man, I uh, really enjoyed it. Yeah, we should uh, maybe do a quick review on that if we're not going to do a full fledged collision right. breakdown, which I kind of don't even want to do at this point. It might get kind of interesting going into Forbidden Door, but we'll see. We'll play it by ear. Yeah, but we're, yeah. we're close, man. We're close to pulling the plug on a full collision review. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we'll have to open that uh, that time slot up for something else because don't yeah. want to stop doing stuff. I just it's getting it is getting tough to talk about that. And like the reviews themselves are pretty quick because it's just match, match, match. Okay. Yeah, uh, when like at least half of them are squash matches. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh yeah, while I'm thinking about it, everyone out there, don't forget to elbow drop that like button, power bomb that subscribe button, share and leave a comment. Uh we look forward to hearing from you. Um, you have any questions, you have anything you want us to talk about, uh, we'd be glad to hear from you. Uh, there are apparently people out there who like to watch us or listen to us. Uh, we appreciate that. We like to keep it chill. Uh, yeah, we're, we're just, uh, wrestling fans that like to talk about wrestling. Yeah. Uh, these are our opinions most of the time. You know, we, we read things online and so, so does everyone, uh, <laughs> But, but yeah, don't, don't take us super seriously. Yeah. <laughs> Some we don't people like, yeah. Cause we don't. Uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Chandler will be back for our collision review coming up here on, we'll probably drop that on Tuesday and yeah. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, I think that just about does it, huh, Chad? Yeah. That's, uh, that's all I got. Not a really much in the way of news uh i'll plug the audio thing again uh if you want to check us out on your commute because watching youtube videos while you drive is uh not the most recommended thing to do uh or maybe you want to fall asleep to our dulcet tones then check us out where any major audio pass podcast is found like apple spotify iheart all that good stuff yeah yeah we're there too uh we got people downloading those too which is kind of kind of yeah. neat to see um yeah, cool. it was up yeah. by up a thousand percent <laughs> whoa <laughs> <laughs> yeah man uh i've never considered myself to be a public speaker <laughs> or anything like that but when i'm talking about something from the heart which wrestling is definitely something i hold dear i find it a lot easier to do so right <laughs> So, yeah, especially uh, like our first couple shows, like it was like, oh, we're going to be people are going to be watching us. Yeah. And I'm real nervous. And like now don't uh, even think way... about it. It's just like, oh, I'm just it's Thursday night. I'm going to talk to my buddies about wrestling mm -hmm. and just happen to record it and throw it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I love YouTube, man. This is a great creative outlet for <laughs> You know, it's, it's how I go to bed every to night now is just going through the home screen. Like, Ooh, that looks cool. Ooh, that looks cool. It's weird though. Sometimes like, uh, especially when, cause I don't know, to, to give you everybody some inside baseball, 
Uh, Dave does one of the recordings of the week and then I do the other. Sometimes I'll scroll through and I'll see a thumbnail and click on it and realize it's our show because he did the thumbnail. I'm like, ah, hey, your thumbnail was so good. I clicked on it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Uh, Yeah, there's like an art to it, man. Like we're we're trying to like figure out the perfect formula for the algorithm. Like should we put one of our (gasps) faces on it or like, you know, what do we do? Like, Big lettering, no lettering, just a picture of a wrestler. Like, there's a lot of things you can do. Like, uh, yeah, there's, the, there's a the, lot the only it. foolproof method that we found so far is put CM Punk on there. Yep, that's the only thing that makes our uh, video views go through the roof. Uh, I wish we could just put CM Punk on every thumbnail. Yeah. Uh, he should just be our logo, huh? Ooh uh that that yeah we wouldn't get in trouble for that at all uh (laughs) but yeah uh cm punk is the uh lightning rod for all that is wrestling so uh yeah i even tried a uh semi clickbaity uh tony khan sad face and an empty arena (laughs) only 120 thousand views like (laughs) Yeah, which Collision did not do good last week. So, mm. uh, yeah. So, yeah, we're, we're going to give that a shot a couple more weeks, see if it picks up. But, uh, but yeah, we really love doing this. Uh, again, it's very, very good for our creative minds. Uh, Chad, this is what you went to school to do. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, ish. It was a little like, okay, this was so long ago, I'm I'm dating myself. Like, YouTube was just becoming a thing. Like, I stopped doing this about 17, 18 years ago. Uh, And honestly, never really thought I'd have the opportunity again. Like, I tried to get back into it a few times, and um, they like, I was not getting the job offers I would want, so I just kind of quit pursuing it. And, uh, but, yeah, so to... uh, uh, I was I was working, you know, in the television medium, uh, and we were just coming up with ways to digitize our clips from our news show to get them online. And we were doing things like researching MP4 and compression, and now it's just stuff you click, drag, and it all does it for you. It goes on to YouTube. But before it was like, oh, we have to figure out how to embed this and put it in our own website. Uh, so yeah it's it's a different time uh youtube's badass and uh the the hardest part has been uh learning how to like edit for a different brain set now like attention spans are different yeah yeah they are goldfish (laughs) squirrel (laughs) yeah yeah um but yeah i'm sure our our most of the people watching our show are in the uh uh, maybe a little older demographic, possibly. Uh, uh, we might not be that catchy for the younger folks, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, hard to That's tell. That's why we got Chandler. Yeah, Chandler's our uh, gateway to the, uh, uh, what do they call Zoomers now? <laughs> That's what he calls himself, a Zoomer. So yeah, Chandler's our, uh, our resident young person for the show. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh he'll be back next week and uh yeah, I think that just about does it. I uh yeah, this is a good one, man. Good good episode, uh good review. Uh yeah, I enjoyed Dynamite. I don't know how much I'm looking forward to Collision. We'll see. <laughs> uh but yeah. Uh cool. Well, if that does it, um i think uh go ahead and let you guys go and everyone have a wonderful night i'm gonna do the thing now ah peace bye bye